Hello, Average Engineers. It's been a while since I did a video. I thought I'd throw it up on a recent article I did that got a lot of traction, got kind of popular probably because of the name. It was called 10, the 10 Billion Row Challenge DuckDB versus Polars versus Daft. Honestly, this article came out of a lot of frustration around how people compare tools and do benchmarks. I just see a lot of fluff going on, people using tools saying, hey, look how this runs on my laptop, this, that, and the other thing. And honestly, it just drives me a little crazy because if you're talking about a real tool that real people are going to use, it's not running on someone's laptop. I get it that there's always room for the next pandas that, you know, everybody's running on their laptop. But then again, even pandas runs in the cloud a lot on machines, on servers. And that's kind of how real tools run and data engineer. They should be tested in a real production-like world environment, like maybe on AWS, for example. So that's kind of what I did with this. I just took the three popular tools out there right now, Polars, DuckDB, and then DAF. Daft is probably not that popular. I think it's a great tool. I'm trying to get more exposure for it. So that's kind of why I added it. And basically what I did is said, I want to just run a simple thing. And I actually did a survey before I even started asking people, who do you think is going to be the fastest to do this? DuckDB, Polars, or Daft? Kind of not surprisingly, people pick DuckDB first, Polars, and then Daft. And to be honest, I'll just jump straight to them. People had it exactly the opposite. It was exactly the opposite of what people voted for. Daft was the fastest, then came Polars, and DuckDB couldn't even finish. Basically, what I did is went on my personal AWS account and created an EC2 instance with a T2 large with eight gigs of RAM and two CPUs. And I said, I want to run a 10 billion record data set using all these tools and just see what happens. Not only to look at performance, but also to look at just how it is to write code with these tools that actually would look like it would in production, like files in S3, it's on EC2, just running a simple aggregation, writing results back out to S3. Something that would actually happen in real life, not just like, hey, I'm playing on my laptop. I used a tool called Data Hobbit that I made a while ago. It's open source. Go check it out on GitHub. It's basically a Rust-based tool to generate fake data sets. And you basically can clone it. I ran a couple commands and bam, I had my 10 billion row parquet data set on that machine. I ran it on that EC2 box and then synced up the files up to S3. Here you can see the command that I ran for my Data Hobbit tool. It's pretty easy once you clone it, repository to be able to input a custom schema and then just say, hey, I want 10 billion records in parquet format, give them to me. There you can see I'm syncing that data up to my EC2 instance, or up to S3 from my EC2 instance. And then there's just ended up being 173 parquet files with a total of 16 gigabytes of data. And remember our EC2 instance only has eight gigabytes of RAM. And if you're curious, that's what the data looked like. That's the format of the data. So I wanted to see a couple things with all three tools. How well can they read lots of files from S3? Can they run basic aggregations? Kind of what does it look like to do default creds? Because basically what I did is set up uh, set up my credentials using the AWS CLI. So like that dot AWS slash credentials file on my Linux box. I just kind of wanted to see how these tools handled it. Are they fast? What does the code look like? Was it hard, easy? Basically to jump straight to it, I did DuckDB first, trying to read DuckDB 10 billion records of S3 parquet files. And I'm gonna be honest with you, DuckDB failed and I tried and tried again. This isn't the first time I've had out of memory issues with DuckDB. One thing to note about the DuckDB code is I did kind of have to use load AWS, load some AWS credentials, call that command, which is actually depreciated. I'm not a huge fan, I just wish that like other tools, DuckDB could just pick up the default cred saying, hey, I'm trying to, re this looks, this person's writing code that's writing and reading from AWS. Let's go look in the default location for those credentials. A lot of other tools do that. DuckDB doesn't. It's kind of annoying. Here is the first kind of code I ran and it totally blew up. You can see I'm just trying to read the data from the S3 and then write the results back out after doing a simple aggregation. You can see the out of memory setting there. Said puke, I can't do this which I still find annoying because there's a lot of other tools that can out of the box without certain gyrations can just read larger in the memory data sets. It's kind of a given. So what I did, which actually had worked in the past for me on local files, not in S3, I set the temp directory. You can see there, temp directory, DuckDB swap. I set a memory limit of 15 gigabytes, way too big. Set a max temp directory of 25 gigabytes. And I ran it again and it puked. Honestly, I think setting the temp directory is supposedly let it 
gonna spill the disk, but I think I might have made a mistake. I'll have to rerun it by setting the memory limp to 15 gigabytes. My machine only had eight gigabytes. That's probably part of my problem. But honestly, it ran and ran and ran and ran. I just don't know why it wouldn't finish. But again, I'm not a DuckDB expert. Uh, maybe I'll try it again. Maybe somebody else can reproduce it. All the codes on GitHub, so anybody could go reproduce this at any time they wanted and maybe let me know how fast it ran for them. Then I did daft, 10 billion records on S3. One thing I want you to notice about this code is how clean and simple it is. I don't have to do anything with credentials. Daft is able to simply pick up those default AWS creds off my box on EC2. Pretty sweet, and run that same aggregation in daft. Don't forget it also has a SQL context. Look at, I'm just using SQL. It's very simple. What I love about daft is that it just works and it does the easy things like picking up credentials. It has a SQL context. Man, it worked like a charm. It's sweet, and it was fast. It took Daft just a little over two minutes, two minutes and 25 seconds to run that aggregation of 10 billion records of Parquet files, do the aggregation, write it back out as a CSV to S3. Pretty sweet, crazy simple code. Next, I went on to Polars. It's you know probably the most popular Rust-based Python wrapper data frame tool out there right now. Everybody's talking about it. It is a nice tool. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the code here. It's not too bad. It pretty much looks similar to the Daft code. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Not too much difference. Got a SQL context as well. Basically running the same aggregation and it was able to write everything back out. Not too bad. It looks pretty simple. Um, I did get an error with this. Basically, it was unable to write the CSV file. What was confusing to me was Polars was smart enough just to scan a Parquet file in S3 and use the default credential location, but when it came to writing a CSV back to S3, it puked, basically, without having other tools, credentials, and I'll show you later, which I found very strange. If you notice in my Polars code, I did use lazy frames to make sure it could process larger in-memory data sets. Basically, what I did was I had to add the S3FS file system, basically to write that CSV back out, which is kind of annoying. It just added a little bit of code. It's not terrible. It was able to pick up my default credentials without doing anything by using that. But, you know, just added a couple lines of code that I didn't have to do with Daft, but it did work once I did that. And the performance was only a little bit slower than Daft, but it was still pretty fast. Two minutes and 30 seconds, just slightly slower than Daft by five seconds. Not bad, a little bit extra code. Again, I think I need to work on my DuckDB skills, but I would argue that a lot of these other tools are kind of making larger than memory data processing out of the box work pretty much because they want to replace tools like Pandas, for example. And a lot of these older tools like Pandas, they really are known for breaking with larger than memory data sets, being really slow, things like that. The thing that bothers me about DuckDB is that, yeah, I know it's a fast tool, but I just wish they made it automatic to be able to spill to disk, things like that. A lot of the other, other tools kind of default to that, so you don't really have to think that hard about doing it. Um, and maybe it's just my unfamiliarity with DuckDB. I just need to keep working on it. I have used it a few times, but I just feel like a lot of times I end up banging my head against the wall, and it's just... If it's anything bigger than a play data set on my machine, if it's something like productionized, it just especially when I put it out in the cloud like this, a Linux EC2 box, stuff on S3. And honestly, I let that DuckDB code run and run. It just ran and churned. You know, these other tools finished in like two minutes and done. It probably took DuckDB 20 minutes before it failed with Automatomy. It was seriously struggling, which makes me think if it was going to finish, it was going to take forever. It definitely wasn't, you know, running for a minute and then erroring out. It was... It was just churning and churning for 20 minutes plus before it finally died. But again, I'll keep working on DuckDB. It was interesting. I think uh, Daft is an awesome tool. I think people should use it more. Polars is awesome. It's pretty fast too. And I'm kind of meh on DuckDB. Take it or leave it.